Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another Transformers third party video review. In today's video, thanks to the guys at TF Direct, I'm taking a look at Toy World's TWM04 Spanner. Yes, <laughs> they've called him Spanner. This is of course Toy World's interpretation of the Studio Ox Springer. It comes in the standard Toy World stylized box with the mountainous background and with the warnings and contact details on the rear. And like all current Toy World figures, he does also come with a piece of the base. And here we have him out of his packaging and he's got a really nice kind of G1 feel to him. Yes, it's not the exact same design, but it's got a good mixture of plastic and die cast. Now accessory wise, we get his sword, which of course can be split into two, but without any nails, it is literally nigh on impossible. Well, I'll have to get a tool for that. Uh, yes, it's pretty much what we would come to expect when we transform Springer into his helicopter mode. We kind of assume that the sword is going to split. Now he also comes with two guns, both of which are exactly the same. Got this lovely red trim going throughout. Again, nice solid plastic, nice gray, uh, nothing really untoward, nothing unexpected from those. We get a small baggie of screw plugs. So where there are visible screws, uh, these little plugs can just be pushed in to cover them up and just to give a more professional look to the piece. And just to finish off, we get a kind of aggressive expression thing going on there. Doesn't really scream Springer to me, but it's nice to get the options included. Now, as much as I like how this looks in the vehicle mode, I can't help but feel that when the Toy World designers designed it, they kind of left before they finished all of these designs because this doesn't tab in as it should. Nothing was kind of finalized. Uh, they, these things should have been rectified before these were put into production. I mean, these don't stay tabbed in. This section here, I just can't get to tab in for the life of me. Uh, these sections don't really stay tabbed in either. Uh, these just kind of dangle. Uh, the wheels, uh, they, they roll. Um, there's rubber on the tires, so that's something. I mean, he does roll quite nicely. Bear in mind, this is quite a bumpy Cybertronian-inspired surface. We do get a very nice windshield section here, which can be lifted up. And we've got a kind of computer console there, and we've got a couple of little seats going on. Uh, the paint applications that are applied, uh, you can see that this lump here is die cast and we have the paint over the metal. Uh, so we're always going to get a slightly a different shade of yellow there. Most companies do it, so it's nothing really that untoward. And coming around the back here, we've got this thruster section painted up in a kind of smoked metallic gray. And again, we've got some, see what I mean by these? Look, they just wiggle around. And we've got some detailing on the back here as well. Uh, coming around to the actual back, it's not the tidiest of rears. Um, yeah, there's not, there's not a lot of junk in that trunk there. Uh, these wheels themselves, they do swing up and down like I did. I mean, they've, they've got a good roll to them. We've got some nice details along the side here, these silver highlights. And we do have these yellow sections at the front, which we can flip up like so. There, don't they look nice? <laughs> now these areas at the back here and these two screw sections on the side here, these are the suspect areas that need plugging. So it's entirely up to yourselves if you do it I know it's something that Planet X give us the option to include as well. I actually like that idea. I like covering up the sections. Let's just see how they look covered up. Now, these two went in nicely and it does look rather nice, but coming around to the back here, uh, this one was perfectly fine, but this one just does not sit right, which is my biggest fear when you get things like this in because you then can't get it back out again. Uh, it just doesn't sit 
really as it should. Uh, maybe it's the screw inside there wasn't quite screwed in as it should have been. But look, there's a very small lip on there where it just raises up. And unfortunately, it does take away uh, some of that tidiness from the back. Toy World, tut tut. Here he is alongside Generation 1 Hot Rod. And yes, mine has seen better days. There's a lot of uh, playwear on there and random stickers that I had when I was a kid. But yes, uh, scale wise, that looks pretty good in my opinion. I know he was always roughly around the same size as G1 Hot Rod, well, the toy was anyway. Um, so yes, it's bigger, but he's a triple changer. And I always thought maybe him being a big kind of Cybertronian car, then uh, he was going to be bigger. Now let's check out Spanner's helicopter mode. To get him transformed up, the transformation isn't overly complexing. Let's just take these guns out for now, just so you can see what's going on. You want to bring the tail fin sections all the way around, and they just come in, and there's a tab here. That's gonna come in and a tab at the back, and these two sections are going to push and close together. Again, close these sections off. I want to bring this section up, and again, there's a tab here. I want to tab that tail fin section in, and then rotate these around like that. Lift this section here upwards. This section can be brought outwards. Bring this block section all the way around, and that's going to tab in to this section here. You can then bring this section back down and slide this section backwards. Flip out the gun sections, extend this hinge outwards, keeping this locked in, bring it backwards so they are now level with this section here. Grab this underside section, lift this section up, we then bring this down and then bring that over and that tabs in. And the sword that we uh, split with our fingernails, honestly, I didn't have to use it at all, <laughs> uh, just folds in half and plugs into here. Now here, this plugging into here is ridiculously tight. I had to physically force that in. And as you force it in, everything else just comes untabbed. But as a result, woohoo, we actually get some nice rotary action going on there. You can have a full on <laughs> half of my audience are thinking, what on earth is he going on about? And the other half are like, oh, that's Airwolf. I love Airwolf. <laughs> there we go. There he is in his helicopter mode. That's actually a pretty nice mode. But that being said, uh, we get a visible head. This doesn't really lock in. These don't really lock in. Um, they just flop around. You know, nothing really tabs in. It just seems a bit lackluster. Like they've kind of got bored and said, yeah, that'll do. Let's just release it as it is. At least the tail section has that. No, 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 that hasn't tabbed in either. <laughs> Whee! I mean, that's, that's pretty nice. That's a good kind of scale for a helicopter to a car, in my opinion. And here we have him alongside a seeker, just so you get the kind of idea of just how big he is. I mean, that's that's a fairly substantial size. Now, you all know me. I'm a very positive guy. I'm a very positive reviewer. And I really want this to work, but I'm struggling with it. They really feel like they've kind of started with this figure but just not finished it it's a close but not quite attempt and you know we're paying a fair bit of money for these uh, it's not just pocket money we pay for these they're like 60 70 80 pounds really you know toy world are quite experienced in the third party market they should have got something like this right and before I completely write him off, let's take a look at his robot mode. To get him into his robot mode, you need to take off the propeller, which is ah, well and truly wedged in. And you want to fold 
back the gun sections, grab this back section and lift it up, untabbing it from this tail section and slide that forward. Untab this tail section and bring it back up, tabbing it in on top. Applying pressure to the tail fin, you want to bend that down to the side. Rotate the tail fins all the way around like so, and so we can collapse them and they look like this. Now this next section, in my opinion, isn't really very well explained in the instructions. You want to untab this leg section by lifting it down. You want to rotate this section around so that this section faces the front. And this here is going to form the kneecap. This section here is going to bring down, slide around, you need to compress the wheels in, and then we can bring this section down. And as we bring it down, there's a tab here and a hole just down here. Bring this in and then tab that into the back and then bring the feet forward. Straighten out these sections here and bring down the arm hinges and wait for it. Oh, that's a horrible, horrible sound. I hate squeaky joints. Uh, you want to flip up this section, and this is where we struggle like mad because the fists have been put in this way around, and I cannot, for the life of me, get them out. Uh, that's the same for both sides as well. They show in the instructions that the fists face the other way. Uh, but again, uh, that one's gone. I had to physically force this fist around, doing damage to this section here. Uh, that is shockingly bad. Fold down the crotch flap, tabbing that in, straightening out those arms, bring them up and around so they are upside down and then bring this chest section forwards clicking it down and we have a slot here and a slot here and the bottom of this section will just come down and that's going to slide in and tab into that waist bend this section down there we go lift up this section here the head can then come down and then this will rock backwards and tab in to that next slot apparently we're meant to rotate the head around it's meant to be uh, this way around when we get it out of the packaging mine wasn't and do you want to see something really nice look at that all of that paint that white paint it's all like a powder all over the back of the head, all off his faceplate. Lucky enough, it wipes off, but hmm. Slide in this back section here, bring these arms up out of the way so we can get access to here, because we're gonna fold this section inwards and that's just gonna close off the rest of that chest. Extend this shoulder section which then allows this section here to rock forwards. It's actually on a hinge. As you rock that forward, that tabs in. Slide this hinge down, bring this one up and compress that like so. Come around to the back of the arms and then we can just bring this back in, tabbing off the rear like so. And here he is fully transformed up into his robot mode. Now his bot mode is by no means perfect, but it is one of his biggest saving graces. It's definitely the best of all three modes, in my opinion, just for the sheer fact that things hold together and he doesn't fall all over the place. I don't like uh, the instructions at all. I don't think they're uh, detailed and clear enough as to what we're meant to be doing with the figure. Uh, but that being said, it wasn't an overly complex transformation and the end result is definitely a very close match to the Studio Ox Springer. Let's just take a look at that face sculpt, try not to overexpose it there. Yeah, it's not bad, it's very uh, G1 
toy inspired. It's a little bit naughty dog going on there as well. And we do have some light piping. Can't really see that from here, but there is light coming in through this back section and into those eyes. I, I don't like the shoulders going forward like that. Now I know it's an option. You can actually have them upright, but if you have them upright, you then can't close off the rear shoulder section either. Uh, articulation wise, the head can look up and down. We can go left and right. There is no tilt there at all. The shoulders. Oh, it's horrible. And out to the side there. Uh, we get outwards motion on the elbow. Uh, we get uh, upper bicep rotation. Uh, there is a double jointed elbow, um, which doesn't make any noise, thankfully. Uh, the wrists can rotate. Now the fingers do open, but they are incredibly stiff and the thumb does move upwards. The chest can rotate, although we do get a bit of hindrance here from these thruster sections at the back. We don't get any abdominal crunch. The hip skirts can come upwards and the legs can come this far forward. So it does seem a little bit loose on this joint though. Out to the side on another horrible friction joint. Uh, the upper thighs rotate. We do get a 90 degree-ish bend on those knees. The knee pads themselves can move and we can actually bend the knees <laughs> forwards, which is, uh, is, which is different, isn't it? <laughs> and coming down to the toes, the toes can go left and right, we can go forwards and backwards and there's no real movement at the rear of the leg, unfortunately. So he's not gonna win any awards for his dynamic abilities anytime soon. That being said, he can still strike a relatively good pose and there's a lot of heft to him. So he is a very well balanced figure. Now the faceplate is just tabbed in using these two tab sections, but you really have to force it to get it out. Let's just bring in the angry Springer face. I don't give you a lot of room there to get stuff tabbed in and there he is there's the angry face <laughs> now this is entirely dependent on what you want from your bot uh, if you want that studio box look that the likes of toy world and mastermind creations have gone for and then yes springer or spanner looks really good with their primorian uh, they look fantastic together you know that looks pretty much spot on but if you want a masterpiece you know toy world had the option here they were the second ones to the market to release their springer uh, we still have the likes of fans toys coming we have the x trans bots so i mean they could be fantastic springers but for the money we're paying for this toy world interpretation the x9 and unique toys have dropped the prices on a lot of their figures so you could pick up alan uh, for the price that you would pay for Spanner. Uh, and of the two, I would pick Alan a thousand times over Spanner. Uh, it's just, there's no enjoyment there. I love how chunky Alan is. I love how robust he is. I love all three modes. Yes, they weren't perfect. Yes, he is not the perfect masterpiece Springer. But he's fun and things tab in, joints work. He does what he's meant to do. A spanner, I, I just feel like it's been rushed. It just feels like a glorified Voyager figure, in my opinion. They've thrown some die cast in there to give it that kind of professional weight and feel. The engineering is good. It's not overly complex, uh, but at the same time, it doesn't work. You know, if you simplify the transformation, uh, I'm not gonna take that away from anybody. If the transformation is a little bit easier, that, that's fine. I don't mind that, you can still make a good masterpiece figure, but if things then don't tab in, or if you can't open things, if there's paint bleeding, if there's that powder that I got on the side of the head, these are all things that are inexcusable, in my opinion, and these are things that should have been picked up before he went to production. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thanks again to the guys at TF Direct for making this review possible. I hope you've found it useful. 
if I've encouraged you to buy this product, then please click the link in the description below. And if I've discouraged you from buying this product, I'm glad I've saved you some money. <laughs> Until next time from myself and uh, Spanner, goodbye.